Hey students, welcome to episode 18 of Hey Students. <laughs> um, today's a weird day. I don't have a ton of time to do this. So I, <laughs> we're only going to have two little segments and this might be a super short video, <coughs> but, um, I, uh, I just want to keep this tradition going of the Hey Students, even though, um, not everyone's watching it. I, those of you who are, thank you. And I appreciate it. And I hope you're, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're getting to know me a little bit and that we're staying kind of connected, at least through these little videos. Um, if you ever want to come talk to me about any of this stuff, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you want to create your own little Hey Teachers video and send it to me, that could be cool too. But um, yeah, so uh, today we're going to talk about two things only. Um, I'm going to show you some of my favorite music from a, from a class that I took in college at BYU. And we're going to do another uh, practicing tips with Mr. Boat. So let's go ahead and start with that. This is another. So this should be an easy one, but um, we've already we've already talked about taking what you're trying to practice and breaking it into little chunks, slowing it down, using a metronome, and and playing it really slowly and doing it a bunch of times, using maybe pennies or, or candies or something on your stand, to, uh, like keep track so that you can play it. 10 times in a row without messing up. Then you use the metronome to go a little bit faster, do it again 10 times. If you mess up, you start over and you keep going faster and faster until you finally you've just got it and your brain and your body just does it without you having to think. Um, this tip is about, uh, well, there are two ways you could do this. So um, I discovered this because last vlog, I played that piece on the violin and when I was watching it, I was like, oh my gosh. I am moving my shoulder so much when I'm playing and it just looked bad. And I could have fixed that if I had been doing this advice I'm about to give you. So the advice is do something so that you can watch yourself playing. So there are two ways you can do this. One is to play in front of a mirror and watch yourself and just look at yourself playing in the mirror and just notice like, am I moving my shoulders in a weird way? Am I holding the bow correctly? Am I like making weird faces while I play? Am I like rocking back and forth a ton? There's like a whole bunch of things you can notice by watching yourself in the mirror. The other way is to just set up a camera or your phone or your Chromebook or whatever and just record yourself playing and don't send it to anyone. Don't, you don't need to send it to me or, or share it with anyone just for yourself and just go back and watch it and realize, oh my gosh, that's what I'm doing? Or hearing yourself sometimes playing back in a recording can really help you realize, wow, every time I play an F natural, it is way out of tune. And I'm not noticing that when I'm playing it, but ugh, when I hear it in a recording, it's really obvious. And it's not meant to beat yourself up, it's meant to point something out to you that you need to fix. And that's it. I mean, just recording yourself and watching it or playing in, in the mirror or doing both can do a lot to help you in your practice. So good luck. I, uh, I hope you guys are practicing just a little bit every day. It doesn't have to be a ton every school day. I'm not requiring it as a grade in the class, but if you want to be a, a good musician and to, to be skillful at your instrument, you have to practice a little bit every day. It's better than a whole bunch on one day. So um, there's your practicing tips from Mr. Vote for today. So uh, I took a class at BYU called Orchestra Lit, and it was about literature, orchestral literature, um, since the 1830s onward, since Berlioz onward. And I loved it. It was one of the most influential classes I've ever taken in my whole life, actually. Um, and I made a playlist of my favorite stuff that we learned about in class and I wanted to share some of the music with you. So this isn't representative of every one of my favorite pieces of music ever, but these are a bunch of my favorite orchestral pieces that we studied in that class. Um, and I'm gonna show just some recordings I found online on YouTube. That These aren't my favorite recordings necessarily, or the best ones. These are just ones that, that looked good and sounded fine. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoy this. Let's, let's go ahead and get going. The first one is Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, which is the textbook example of programmatic music or music that represents something specifically or a story specifically. Um, and I love this one for a lot of reasons. It's a cool piece, especially movements four and five. But um, 
This is movement five and there's this part with a tuba. It's so good. Um, the next one, this is uh, Rimsky Korsakov, Scheherazade, which it's it's just epic. It's just epic. Such sweeping, beautiful music, and it's just so cool. Awesome stuff. I mean, all this stuff is awesome. This next piece is Tchaikovsky's March Slav. And, I mean, this is a famous piece in the orchestral world. And it's so good. It really is. It's awesome. I mean, all these pieces are going to be awesome. Tchaikovsky, Fantasy Overture to Romeo and Juliet. Another awesome piece, Dvorak 9. And for a tuba player, this isn't the best piece to play. But it's just so awesome. It's so good. The whole the whole thing is good. The, the fourth movement, all the movements are awesome. It's just a really cool piece of music. Um, Dvorak's uh, Slavonic dances, there are a bunch of them. There's like 16, there's eight and then another eight. This one, number two from the first set, it's probably my favorite. It's slow and kind of lyrical, but I just think it's cool. I mean, maybe my musical tastes are really unrefined and I just like music that, that sounds like it was inspired or sounds like that it inspired movie music, but I love it. Mahler 5, this, uh, this third movement here, some of the best. It's slow. This is, a, this is a slow movement, but it's gorgeous. Oh, it's so good. So good. Debussy, La Mer, in impressionistic. He uh, he didn't like that word, but it it's about the sea, and it makes me think. I don't know. It just he was really good at just coming up with all kinds of different colors of sound, different different textures and timbres and and tones and and using instrumentation and in cool ways to just like smear. It's like smearing paint into different different colors. I it's so cool. <laughs> And everything from this piece is just really neat. Um, Stravinsky, I love Stravinsky. My three favorite pieces. The first one is Firebird. And I just won't do it justice, this little video, but... So cool! If you listen to the whole thing, it just rocks. Uh, Petrushka, it's another Stravinsky piece. Um, this one is really cool. I like this one a lot. I don't know why I love this one so much, but I listened to this one a lot in college randomly. There's this part where, Stra what's cool about Stravinsky is that, I mean, he's so rhythmic. And he has really interesting rhythmic ideas. Right here. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Um, right of Spring. I and mean, when you think of Stravinsky, this is what you think of. So influential. And I think it's cool. Not all of my musician friends like this piece, and that's okay. But I just, it is just so cool. The ideas that he was experimenting with and the, the sounds and colors. And very influential on John Williams and a lot of his music, Star Wars and things. 
um, Shostakovich, uh, the festive overture. Oh, this is so good. Oh, it's so awesome. Holst, the planets. Mars is, is one of the most famous pieces of music. Also very influential on, on movie music. And then Jupiter is my favorite uh, movement from the planets. I just think it's so good. My favorite part is the part in the middle. This part in the middle, this little part. I could listen to this forever. Um, Britain, Four C Interludes. Um, this is, I, I just think this one is cool. I, I, I don't really know how to describe this one. This one also has a bunch of interesting colors of sound to it. Um, Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue. I mean, this is a super famous, super famous one. <laughs> this is a fun one. There's just a bunch of cool cool textures and rhythms in there. American in Paris this is another Gershwin. This is a, a cool one. I mean it sounds it sounds very movie-ish. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun one. Um, Appalachian Spring, this is Aaron Copeland. This piece is just out of control, it's so cool. My favorite part of the whole piece, and it's pretty long, is at the end there's this like chorale kind of hymn-like spot. This is my favorite spot. Mm. 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 So good. Another Aaron Copeland, El Salón Mexico. This one, I, I played with an orchestra one time, and maybe that's why I like it so much, because you, you like the stuff you're familiar with. But it's a fun one. Anyway, that's a cool one. Bernstein. The West Side Story. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Very influenced by jazz and and um, and Latino music. Adagio for strings. I mean, who doesn't love this piece? This is one of the most famous orchestral pieces of music. Mm. Oh, I just want to listen to all these now. <laughs> um, and then this one, kind of a random one. The J John Adams. The Short ride in a fast machine. It's just cool. It's a little piece. It's like not even five minutes long. Another super rhythmic one. Anyway, those those are some of my favorite pieces that are that were from that class. I mean, there are a ton of other pieces that I love a lot that we just didn't talk about in that class. Um, hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna post this playlist that I just looked off in the description below. So if you want to check out some of the music, I, I had a student one time a few years ago who was telling me how much he loves movie music and music from John Williams and stuff, and I was telling them like, dude. It is awesome, it's true, but there's so much more out there that will blow your mind. And I was referring to stuff like this. Not not all these you're gonna like, some of these you won't like, some of them you will, and maybe you won't like any of them, but um, there's some pretty cool music here. 
And there's a lot of other stuff that I could talk about, but I'm not going to. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That was fun for me. Well, I hope that was interesting. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. I, uh, that music, I just want to go listen to all that music now. It's been a while since I've listened to some of those pieces and they are so good. The more you listen to this type of music, the more it makes sense to you and the more you enjoy it. And it's that's actually true with every type of music that could be country or rap or jazz or whatever. The more familiar you are with a type of music and even specific pieces or songs, the more you'll come to enjoy it. So sometimes just listening to something a lot will help you understand it and enjoy it more. And that's certainly the case with this music. I just love it. I hope you guys have a good week and I'll catch you on the flippity flip. I could listen to this all day, every day, on repeat, everything in the world, just over and over again. Why did I say it that way? <coughs> Why am I coughing? <coughs>